When traditional farming activities that maintain the heathland stop, then scrub woodland and bracken quickly take over. But the woodland itself is a great wildlife habitat, and birds in particular are attracted to its plentiful supply of insects and the different opportunities for nest sites. In the spring, green woodpeckers nest in holes in trees which they excavate themselves with their long pointed beak. They feed on a variety of ground insects, but are particularly fond of ants. Springtime along the woodland edge is a great time to hear birdsong, and one of the easiest to identify is the distinctive call of the yellow hammer. People say he's singing, a little bit of bread, but no cheese. In summer, the flowering plants along the woodland edge attract many different species of butterflies and moths. Common butterflies like the gatekeeper are joined by a number of summer visitors like this clouded yellow, which flies over from Europe every year. The painted lady is another long distance migrant. Each year, it spreads northwards from the desert fringes of North Africa and the Middle East, spreading through Europe, reaching Britain and Ireland by the late summer. As autumn begins and the leaves begin to fall, the woodland edge is one of the best places to see mushrooms and toadstools. Most fungi actually grow underground as a vast network of filaments called a mycelium, and the bits we see above ground, the mushrooms and toadstools, are their equivalent of flowers or fruits. These are used to produce millions of tiny spores, which are blown in the wind to spread the fungi. Fungi provide a vital role in nature, breaking down dead organic matter such as wood and leaf litter. It's been estimated that over a thousand species of insects and other creatures in the UK alone are dependent on fungi for food and shelter. Today we think that in order to get timber from a tree, it must be cut down, and that's the end of that tree. But most native woodland trees don't die when cut down. The stump of the tree remains alive and sends up new shoots, replacing the old trunk with several smaller trunks. This is called coppicing, and for thousands of years, woodlands have been managed in this way. At Kirby Moor, the trees are coppiced every seven years or so to provide useful timber for the production of charcoal and fencing. And what we're actually doing here is making wattle hurdles, or in the old days known as sheep hurdles, and now it's used for garden fencing. Uh, basically, we're using either willow or hazel, whichever is available. Both are equally useful for hurdle making. Stuart first splits the willow branches with a bill hook and then alternately weaves the split lengths between a number of upright willow branches set in a wooden block that holds them until the hurdle is finished. But coppicing does have another benefit and the clearances produced in the woodland are also very attractive to wildlife. Tawny owls set up territories in the woodland and hunt for small animals like mice and voles. Grey squirrels are also very common in coppiced woodland and like foraging for seeds and nuts on the ground.